Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be looking at recycling matter on Earth, specifically the law of conservation of matter. So what does the law of conservation of matter say? It states that matter is neither created nor destroyed. Instead, it just changes form. So it's kind of like a recycling bin or something along those lines. So um, instead of looking at plastic or you know glass bottles or something, now we're looking at molecules. So we've got carbonic acid, a very simple molecule. It's got hydrogen, it's got a carbon, and it's got some oxygens here. It can be broken down into carbon dioxide and also into water. When we combine enough carbon dioxide and water together, we can make glucose. That's photosynthesis, by the way. And then uh, glucose can be broken down again into carbonic acid. So you can see that all of the molecules are just being recycled, all of those elements in them. Now, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at different examples of how molecules and how elements are recycled on Earth. So we're going to start with carbon. And so here is the carbon cycle. Yeah, the first part of that would be animals release CO2. That's you just breathing out. Plants use that CO2 through photosynthesis to make something called glucose, which has this chemical formula. Now, what happens when you cease to exist, right? So when you are no longer releasing CO2 and plants are no longer able to absorb CO2, when you die, that means that that carbon has to go somewhere, right? And so eventually that can be transformed into something called fossil fuels. And so that would be something like oil or coal. Now, when those fossil fuels are burned in the future, that releases CO2 into the atmosphere. And then when that mixes with water through a process that we talked about already called carbonation, that can form carbonates. And so carbonates have this structure, CO3 with a 2 minus. Now, don't worry about the negative signs up here. Instead, just focus on the actual elements. So we've got one carbon and we've got three oxygens in a carbonate. Carbonates are found all over the place. They're found in rocks, seashells. They dissolve really easily in water, and they are nutrients that are found in both the soil and then also in water. Now, our next cycle, the hydrological cycle, also known as the water cycle, is extremely easy, right? Water is stored in clouds, the ocean, rivers, glaciers. It's stored all over the place, and water is constantly evaporating and condensing. Evaporation is when we go from a liquid into a gas, okay? And then condensing is when we go from a gas into a liquid. And so when, you know, like rain happens, and so some of that rain's going to land on actual soil, it's going to get filtered, it's going to infiltrate the soil, it's going to go underground into aquifers, which is where we get most of our water from anyway. And then also, you know, we've got some um, hydrolysis that's going to happen, which is a form of chemical weathering that we talked about earlier. Animals will release water when we breathe and also when we sweat. Plants will absorb water through their roots, but also something that not a lot of people realize is that plants also release water through their leaves through transpiration. Now, what about the nitrogen cycle? So the nitrogen cycle, 70% of our air is made up of nitrogen. Most of it's not oxygen, it's mostly nitrogen. Where did that nitrogen come from? Well, for the most part, we have bacteria called denitrifying bacteria that we find in the soil and in the water that turns nitrogen waste, like ammonia, which is NH3, into nitrogen gas, which is in our atmosphere. Now, nitrogen fixating bacteria and algae will convert that nitrogen gas in our atmosphere into nutrients in the soil like nitrates and nitrites. Now again, nitrate has this symbol, nitrite has that symbol. Don't worry about the negative signs, instead just focus on the elements. So we've got nitrogen and three oxygens. Here we have one nitrogen, we have two oxygens. Now, animals, we produce tons of nitrogen waste, right? So it's not ammonia that we produce. We produce urea, which is what where like urine gets its name. But um, it's the same kind of thing. Okay? It's a nitrogen-containing compound. Nitrogen compounds are found all over the place. They can be found in rocks, and they can be broken down by abrasion. And remember, that's a form of weathering that we talked about. Um, making nitrates and nitrites go into the soil directly. And something interesting is lightning has enough energy to turn nitrogen gas in the atmosphere directly into nitrates and nitrites when it mixes with water in the atmosphere. Next cycle, the phosphorus cycle. So phosphorus, rocks naturally contain phosphates. Okay, phosphate has this symbol, PO4 with a three minus. Again, just focus on this. We have one phosphorus and we have four oxygens in a phosphate. Large rocks can be weathered down by abrasion and phosphates can enter the soil and the water. Another kind of interesting thing about that is that living plants absorb phosphates from the soil and use them to grow. And then when we eat those plants or when we eat anything that has phosphate in it, it becomes a part of us and our cells. Decomposers like mushrooms, so that's supposed to be like a mushroom, uh, break down dead plants and animals and they return the phosphates that were in the plants and in the animals back into the soil again. 
Sedimentation can form new rocks. So, you know, phosphates can settle and then they can form new sediments, which would then make new rocks eventually. And then new rocks can be lifted up through geological uplifting, except that would be like the process of making mountains. That takes a long, long time, but the phosphates then can be weathered down again and the process repeats. Last one, the sulfur cycle. Sulfur and sulfates are found naturally in rocks. Again, sulfates have this symbol, SO4, 2 minus, but just focus on we have one sulfur, we have four oxygens. When rocks are broken down through abrasion, plants can absorb those sulfates and animals can eat them also, just like in the phosphorus cycle, right? Except now we're looking at sulfates. Bacteria can consume dead plants and animals, putting sulfates back in the soil and release this gas called a hydrogen sulfide. It smells pretty bad. Now, another important thing, volcanoes and fossil fuels can release SO2 gas, which then can make acid rain. And then last but not least, acid rain can chemically weather rocks, kill bacteria and organisms, and then also, as a byproduct, return some of those sulfates back to the soil, and the process repeats again. All right, so hopefully you found that at least somewhat um, useful, and that would be all of the laws of conservation of matter and the cycles that we need to know for our exams. All right?